Okay. Giles, hello. Hi. Again. Again. Nice to see you. We started talking about this project a year ago, mm -hmm. maybe. It's taken a year to put it together. You were just photographing servicemen and ex-servicemen that have been through this sort of injury. We spoke about a lot because we didn't know how we should treat it, uh, what would be the right thing to do. But, you know, you've had, you know, you had a good take on it and you had some good ideas, partly because of what you went through. Tell me a bit about when that self-portrait mm -hmm. that, that you took of yourself that kind of we, we kind of based that self-portrait on maybe on some of the stuff we did for our shoot and how that worked. It's a really hard thing photographing people that are injured. I mean, I do it all the time, traveling around the world, covering conflicts. But I've noticed and sometimes been uncomfortable about the way that the servicemen have been photographed. You know, I was injured myself in 2011, stepped on a, an IED, lost both my legs and, and my arm. And, you know, I went through a really difficult period, but probably about six months after I got through the initial surgeries mm. and starting to recover, of being embarrassed. You know, uh, people would come and visit me and I would, I would pull the sheets up over my arm. I didn't want people to see my legs. I didn't want to see them. You know, I would say something that's really interesting. What do you notice most about your own body? Well, you only ever see your legs and your arms. So when they're injured, that's what you see every day. Mm. So every morning you see the missing limbs. You're very aware of it. Yeah, I think I would, I would describe it as being ashamed. Yeah. And I thought, well, I need to deal with it. I need to find a way to confront how I feel about myself. I said, about six months after I got injured, I was still in the hospital. I obviously hadn't taken any photographs. I hadn't done any of my work again. I thought, you know what? This is the opportunity for me. Two things. One is to take a photograph again and feel like I'm a photographer. And secondly, confront about how I feel about the way I look. And so I decided to do a self-portrait. Uh, probably two days before I'd gone to Afghanistan, um, I'd been in the British Museum. And that memory kept going around in my head of these Roman and Greek statues that you see there that are broken, that are missing limbs. But when you're walking around, you don't say, oh, it's broken, it's rubbish. You see the beauty that is still there. So I called this my, my Greek sort of statue portrait, and it was very much like that, it was on a, on a plinth, and I was sat there in just a t-shirt and a pair of shorts. You, my, my legs, the stumps were there, my arm as it is, and I was just kind of staring at the camera, I think defiantly, yeah. and it was the moment really when I said, fuck you to the world, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, this is it, it is what it is, but I'm still the same person inside. In fact, I'm probably a better person, and that photograph was the moment I took control of my own story again. Mm. It was a defiant moment and a moment when, yeah, I really felt empowered by it. And I felt after that, I was never embarrassed again about the way I looked. Mm. You know, and it's interesting, you know, I had compliments. It, it ended up in, at, at the Taylor Wessing, um, so it was at the National Portrait Gallery. You know, and I had people saying to me, God, you look really hot in that and really... And that's the point, is people were looking at my face and they were seeing the character. They weren't seeing the injuries. So, you know, when we talk about doing this story, you know, again, it was a really important story for me to do because I went through the same rehab. I went through the military rehab at uh, Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham and Headley. And, you know, I lay in beds next to young guys who had lost their, their genitals and, and hearing them crying at night and, and really seeing what they dealt with and realizing nobody was really talking about it. There's a sense of people wanting to show people when they've learned to walk again. You know, there's so many like, TV shows of walking to the North Pole, doing this, doing that. That's the acceptable face of, of injury. Mm. It's not acceptable and not talked about when people are either left paralyzed or the genitals are gone, all these other things. So yeah. it was great that we could get to do this story. And then I was thinking, well, how do I do the portraits of, of the guys? And you know, we discussed a few, a few ways that it could be done. And then really, it just suddenly made sense. Like I should photograph them the same way I photographed myself. Because I did it as a way of saying, this is me, this is who I am. Mm. And I know the guys feel exactly the same. And when we discussed it with them this morning, exactly the same message as they said, no, we're strong. We want to show that, we want to show our resilience. And you know, taking them away from the wheelchair, taking them away from the apparatus that kind of imprisons them. Mm. And just saying, it is what it is, you know? Yes, I'm missing my legs, yes my arms are damaged, but I'm me and I'm here. And I hope that that's what those portraits are. So, you know, I have quite a few different experiences that are quite unique as a photographer. I was photographed moments after I was injured. That's right, yeah. So when I photograph people who are injured themselves, again, I have that perspective. And yeah. again, today, you know, I was photographing these injured servicemen who have the same injuries as me. And I photographed them in exactly the same way as I chose to photograph myself. Yeah.
one word we kept coming back to when we were discussing it and thinking about your idea was that sense of pride mm. of being as you said, proud. Yeah. When you were taking that first portrait of yourself, was that a difficult thing for you to, to get to that point, to con finally confront, I guess, what you were and, what, uh, it, and the changes that had happened? It was really hard. I mean, I would describe it as, as you know, posing naked or doing something that any of us would find uncomfortable. It really was, yeah, hugely unsettling because it was like, I knew that that was going to then appear places, people would see it around the world, it'd be magazines, that would be, you know, my identity, but as I say, I think it was the fact that I had control of it. Because other people have done portraits of me, yeah. and I've been very uncomfortable about the way that they've sometimes chosen to do it, or the way that their editors have told them to do it. So it was really important for me that I was able to take that photograph mm. and say, this is how I want to betray myself. Mm. And, and yeah, I learned a lot of lessons from that. You know, I've always said that my work is trying to tell people stories, and I'm always trying to show people not as victims, but as victims of circumstance. And I'm always trying to show the empowerment in people. And to have to do that for yourself was something I never thought I'd have to deal with. Mm. But it made me stronger as a photographer. Yeah. How you've, um, you know, you went on assignment with the army, with the US Army, I think mm -hmm. you were, yeah. you were and, and you've had to deal with those sort of institutions, long established institutions before. Do you have any sense of, I guess, just the fact that we're talking about these issues now and we're kind of, we're doing a story on it, a sense that modern manhood, I guess, is kind of a bit more open about mm -hmm. some of those taboos are being cracked open. Has that changed in the last five years? Is it changing this year? Or? I think it's changing subtly. I think, you know, the, the, the military obviously is an ancient <laughs> institution. It has ways of doing things. You know, I myself, when I went through Headley Court, I wasn't mm. even allowed to take photographs of myself. Right. They put so many strict rules on me. And what was interesting is actually I had a lot of the, the injured soldiers saying to me, why aren't you photographing? Why aren't you documenting our rehab? Because they were proud of themselves. They were proud of the fact that they were getting on their legs. Mm. They were proud of the fact that they were, you know, pumping iron in the gym and, and overcoming everything that happened to them. They mm. kept saying, take a photograph, take a photograph. And I said, I'm not allowed to. Mm. So I think sometimes, you know, the military misses a trick because actually I, I would have taken photographs that would have empowered those guys. And, mm. and nobody could have documented that whole process better than me because mm. I was going through it. Mm. So yeah, I think they're still catching up. It's improving. But you know, there's obviously, it's, it's the military. There's always going to be a sort of sense of, you know, toughen up, get over it. I remember like, you know, psychologists came around the hospital one day and sort of just came, you know, pretty much sort of walked in going, you know, if anyone needs to speak to anyone, and everyone's, you know, head down. Yeah. Because nobody would want to, to, to show that because sadly, maybe that's seen as a sign of weakness. And we've only got to look at the, the terrible statistics of how many, you know, ex-servicemen commit suicide or how many end up homeless. There mm. is problems with, the psychological damage of, of being in conflict uh, and being in the military. And it is still a, a taboo. Yes, it's improved massively. It's definitely much more open than it was. Mm -hmm. But as I say, those are the facts that, that show more needs to be done. Two questions for you. Mm -hmm. What do you hope um, the subjects, the servicemen, the injured servicemen that we have taken today, whose portraits you have taken today, what do you hope that they feel when they see their picture in, in GQ? Like, as I say, it is what it is, you know, it's, they have those injuries. I'm not going to kind of cover up that they've got those injuries. Um, but, you know, maybe too often what people are focusing on, and this has happened to me when people are doing my portraits, people are focused on what's missing. Right. And they're taking a picture of the missing limbs. They're trying to take a picture of the prosthetics. They're taking a picture of the wheelchair because they think that defines the story. Mm. I hope what I did today was do a portrait of two courageous, strong men. Right. Great. Charles, it's been a pleasure. Cool. As Is always. The dance bit now? Now we dance. Now we dance. <laughs> yeah. We break into song now. Fantastic. <laughs> make them laugh, make them. <laughs> Thank you, that's my friend. Cool. That's brilliant. Yeah, no, I think it worked out well. I think that's a really good part of it, actually. Yeah. A really important part of it.